If you are doing the end myopia method of natural vision improvement and do you have astigmatism or cylinder correction, then usually that is gonna be a negative number. But what if your sill number is positive? Hi, I'm Jem and I'm following Jake Steiner's End Myopia Method of Natural Vision Correction to get back to 2020 vision and life without glasses. It's all based on science, not magic, and if you want more information, I'll pop some links in the description down below. I should just start by saying I am not an optometrist. I have done no sort of educational training in so far as eyes and eye health and eye correction. I have just done reading on the internet so please do not take my word as gospel consult a medical practitioner if you need actual advice on anything i'm just here to share some info i am not responsible for anything that you choose to do with your eyes and with your glasses all right let's get on with it to get started let's quickly recap what glasses correction looks like when it's written down so first up you're going to have sphere which is either a positive or a negative number. A positive number means that you are farsighted. You can see things in the distance just fine, but you need help to see things close up. That would be the case if you have hyperopia or presbyopia. If your spherical number is negative, that means that you can see things close up just fine, but in the distance you need help. That situation is called myopia. And if you have very high myopia, you might not be able to see very clearly close up at all, your clarity might be limited to very, very short range. Now, the next number you'll see written down is a sill number. Not everyone has a sill number. Only people with astigmatism will have a sill number. Sill standing for cylinder. And if you have a sill number, you will also have an axis. An axis just tells you which direction the cylinder correction is going in. So that cylinder means that there's a little bit extra correction on certain directions. If you have a negative spherical number and a negative cylinder number, have to think about that, then that means that on this axis that you have written in your correction, you need an extra boost of negative correction. If it is a positive correction in your cylinder, then what that is saying is that on that axis that's written in your correction, you don't need as much negative correction in that direction, so they can take some off by putting a little bit of plus in the written down correction. So what then is the actual difference between negative cylinder and positive cylinder? To be honest, as far as your eye is concerned, nothing. The same thing is going on in the eye of the person with negative cylinder as is going on in the eye of someone with positive cylinder. In fact, these two different ways of writing things down actually relates more to who is doing the writing and how they like to describe things. It's not so different from saying that Mark is taller than Ruth. You can also say Ruth is shorter than Mark means the exact same thing. It's just putting it the other way around. When you're saying Mark is taller than Ruth, you're kind of saying that Ruth is the default position and Mark is tall. If you're saying that Ruth is shorter than Mark, Mark becomes the default position and Ruth is shorter. So let's apply this to cylinder correction. Negative cylinder and positive cylinder are not by themselves absolute corrections they are a relative correction, relative to your spherical correction. Our glasses correction as it's written down doesn't tell us exactly the strength that we need on that axis. It tells us the strength that we need overall, our spherical correction, plus or minus what we need to add or take away on this axis. So it's a relative number. So if, for example, you have a minus five spherical correction and a minus 0.5 cylinder correction, then that means that on one axis you need minus five and on the axis that's written in your correction, you need an extra 0.5 strength. So on that axis, you won't just have minus five strength, you will have minus 5.5. You see how it adds together. So that 
In this case, minus 0.5 cylinder correction doesn't mean that on that axis that's the only correction you have. That is the correction that is added to the spherical correction you have. And it works exactly the same way for the plus. So if you have a minus 5 in your spherical correction, but now you have a plus 0.5 dioptus of cylinder correction, then that means that at the axis written in your glasses correction, you need 0.5 weaker correction. So at that axis, you would need negative 5 plus 0.5, which is negative 4.5. So you might have noticed there that in the correction with the negative cylinder, on that axis you ended up with a negative 5.5 correction, whereas on the correction written down with the positive cylinder, you end up with a negative 4.5 correction on that axis. So it does make a difference. The thing to note though is that if you do have a positive cylinder correction, you can convert that into a negative cylinder correction with just a little bit of maths. So as we've said, if you have a positive 0.5 cylinder correction, it means that on that meridian, that axis, you need negative 4.5. So we could say instead that you need a negative 4.5 correction overall instead of the negative 5, but on the opposite axis from the one written down in your correction, you'll need an extra negative 0.5 dioptis. But because now you're talking about a different axis, you're going to need to change the axis written down in your correction to get the right glasses correction for you. This isn't actually hard either, because what you're doing is you're going to find the opposite axis from the one that's written down. Axis is written as a number between 0 and 180. It is based on a circle which has 360 degrees in it, but because the axis of astigmatism or cylinder correction isn't just the radius of this circle, it is the whole diameter. Once you get to 180, you're back at 0 as well. Just look at the other end of the line. So axis for cylinder is a number between 0 and 180. Whatever number your cylinder is, to get the opposite number, you're going to add or subtract 90, half of 180. Whether you add or subtract is going to depend on what number you have, but it's nothing complicated. It is only that your answer is going to have to be a number between 0 and 180. So if your cylinder correction is 18 degrees, 18 minus 90 is going to become a negative number, so that's not the one you want. 18 plus 90, that's 108. So that's what your new axis would be. Similarly, if you started with 108, if you add 90 onto that, you'll end up with 198, which is above 180. So rather than adding 90 to 108, you would be subtracting 90 from 108 and getting 18. So I hope that makes sense about how we flip the axis in this situation if we're making a positive cylinder into a negative cylinder. Someone who was starting with a written correction, a glasses correction that was notated as negative 5 spherical plus 0.5 cylinder and an axis of 18 degrees, add your spherical and your cylinder together and be aware of negative numbers and how that works. So a negative 5 plus a positive 0 0.5 will become negative 4.5. That will be your new spherical number. You can then make your cylinder number 0 0.5 into a negative number negative 0.5 and remember to flip the axis by adding or subtracting 90. In this case adding and we get 108 degrees. If this all sounds a little bit complex or you don't trust yourself to really get it right, there are conversion calculators online on websites. You can go and put in this information put in your current correction with your positive cylinder into these converters and they will tell you the answer. But it's helpful to understand what's happening, to understand why you might be trying to flip your positive cylinder to a negative cylinder and you end up going from a minus five 
to a minus 4.5 in glasses. So why would you ever even care enough to want to turn your positive cylinder correction into a negative cylinder correction? What is the point now that we've gone through all that? You might want to change your positive cylinder correction into a negative cylinder correction when you're doing the end myopia method because you want to reduce your correction complexity. For more information on that, I will put a link up here and down there because when we're reducing our correction complexity and trying to reduce our cylinder correction, we might want to trade some cylinder for some spherical correction. And to do that, you need to understand how they relate to each other. Or even if you're not trying to trade your cylinder correction for some spherical correction and you're just wanting to drop your cylinder correction, which you might do in differential glasses, or if your cylinder correction is very low. If you have a positive cylinder correction and you drop it, you're effectively making your correction stronger on that axis. So if you have a negative 5 spherical correction and a positive 0.5 cylinder correction and you drop the cylinder correction, you now have negative 5 glasses and that axis that used to have the extra plus in it that was actually only negative 4.5 now has to respond by adapting in such a way as to make your whole eye negative Five. But if you had gone through the process of swapping your positive cylinder correction for a negative cylinder correction, you would have discovered that actually you could have spherical as negative 4.5 with a negative 0.5 cylinder correction. And if you drop the cylinder correction, you get negative 4.5. That's a whole half diopter less. And then your eye adapts to become negative 4.5 instead of negative 5. So that's pretty valuable information as far as I'm concerned. I hope this video has made sense. I have tried to be as clear as I can with a lot of numbers. But at least if you get the gist, then you can use one of those online converters and trust what you see in the results, if you know kind of vaguely what you're expecting. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks so much. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe if you don't mind. It would mean a lot to me, really appreciate it. And I will see you hopefully next Thursday, but we will see. <laughs> okay, thanks for being here. Bye. Now axis is written between as an Does it make sense that on certain, a certain axis, And the higher, the strong, the bigger, mm, this is a mess. <laughs>